will lead us now to our next discussion. Um, there were three quarterbacks taken in the first round. Uh, there could be three quarter. There could be actually four quarterbacks starting opening day um, with Luck, RG three, Tannehill, and in my opinion, um, Whedon will start day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to throw Whedon into the equation, you can. But um, we can either answer this question uh, rest of their careers, or you can answer the question um, as far as what they'll do this year. Um, of those four, who do you think will have the best? Well, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me ask you a different way. Because um, I think I think we all know what I'm about to do. Uh oh. Uh, we've got four quarterbacks. Um, Crazy Uncle Nick, who do you think will have the best either first year success? Let's or say first three years. First three Let's years. say first three years because that's a better sample size. I'm going to go with Andrew Luck. Not taking Tannehill? Uh, I mean, I have, I have tremendous love. Have you seen his wife? Uh, I have seen his wife. Does this do nothing for you? Uh, it does some things for me. It does, doesn't do anything for the Dolphins offense. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got tremendous love for the Dolphins, uh, born down in South Florida. I think Taney Hill's going to do some good things. But uh, on the other hand, I mean, Chad Henney didn't quite do it for us either. Um, so I'm a, I'm a little apprehensive. But I think Andrew Luck, uh, even though they the Colts have gone through um, issues in management uh, and, and coaching, I, I think Andrew Luck is positioned for success. He's obviously the best quarterback coming out of the draft. Uh, I just don't have any faith in the Redskins. I, I like RG3. RG3 is good, strong, fast, smart. Uh, but anything Daniel Snyder does, I'm opposed to. Interesting. Yeah, I, you know, it's it, for me, it's just a question of, it, it's so hard to know what's going to happen because it's not just the quarterback, it's the rest of the franchise. It's the defense, it's the offensive line, it's the coaching staff. I think you cannot pick, you cannot in good conscience pick Tannehill, and you cannot in good conscience pick Whedon because those are two franchises that are essentially snake bit, and, and they're not being run well. They have not been run well recently they've had so many problems that you feel like until they have success you cannot reasonably predict success and i'm sick of all the predictions of the dolphin success stop predicting that they're going to be successful say they're not going to be successful until they actually are successful they've been the poster child for the team that everybody goes watch the dolphins watch the dolphins this year they're really going to make a big move up and then nothing happens stop making that pick it's really a pick between andrew luck and rg3 and here's the decision calculus you say Andrew Luck I has... That, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's almost like someone said Mac. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. so the question is, are the Colts as bad as they looked last year? Because if they are, then you've got to pick RG3. If the Colts are not as bad as they looked last year, and the Colts' management is as good as they have seemed to be in terms of managing the team, then you got to pick Luck. If the Colts are as bad as you thought last year, you've got to pick RG3, even though... The Redskins have kind of been snake bit recently, but those are both franchises that have had historic success. Uh, I think the Colts are as bad as they looked last year. And I think if you look at the first three years, RG3 will have a better first three years. After that, I think he and he and Luck will be discussed in the same sentence over and over again because they will both have success. Uh, and it'll be one of those great... Is it the 83 draft class that had Jim Kelly and all those great quarterbacks in it where you'll hear a lot of those those comparisons between those two? And I think it'll ultimately be positive comparisons. They're both going to have good careers, but my my gut says RG3 has a better first three years. And anyone that knows me knows that it hits it hurts me to say that because Washington needs to change their mascot. You got a problem with uh, their mascot? You know, racism, why is it a big deal anymore? Oh, I thought you were talking about the mascot. Is it being the head coach Shanahan? No, no. Sorry. Shanahan's um, fine. All right, here, here's my take on this because someone has to bring a little bit of truthiness into it as I uh, pet the puppy. Um, that was, that was wait, not a metaphor. That, that was not. It's not a metaphor, no. yes. He's actually petting the puppy. Oh! Yes. Um, Tannehill will, will be last because he's probably the one that's n- not ready. Um, he's not ready to handle an NFL offense. I understand his college coach is in Miami and there's a bit of an easy transition there. Um, but there... You get rid of Brandon Marshall, who is probably a top five wide receiver, and you don't replace him with a wide receiver that can help your quarterback. I don't even think you drafted a tight end. Someone check that out. Um, but I, I don't see Tannehill being successful off the field. Um, Tannehill, you know, <laughs> doing pretty good. She might be a little overrated for my taste, but hey, not, not going to knock it. Not going to knock it. Well played, Mr. Tannehill. Well played. Um, I think number three is going to shock a lot of people, and I'm answering this 
because of the way the question is asked, which is the next three years. Uh, I'm putting Luck third. And I'm putting Luck third because I think the Colts are terrible. They've got no offensive line. They've got a declining Ridge Wayne from the U. Uh, they don't have any running backs. They've got two tight ends that are pretty good who are going to catch a lot of balls for them because they can't throw to anybody else. They can't stop anybody on defense. Someone explain to me why Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeney are now in a 3-4 system. That makes no sense. I think over the next three years, he will struggle. Now, longer term, I think Luck will be okay because they will build, but it's going to take more than three years. I like I like Brandon Wheaton. Um, the kid's got a strong arm. He, he I know he's older, but he knows how to be a professional. He was in the Yankees system. The kid can sling the football, and I watched a ton of Oklahoma State games. I was kind of hopeful that, you know, the Falcons would draft him as a backup, excuse me, a backup quarterback. Um, I, I, there's a lot to like about him. He, he has to compete against McCoy. That's nothing special. Um, they've got some weapons. Assuming McCoy's even still there, which they've already openly discussed trading sure, him. Sure, absolutely. So. But, I mean, it's not like he's a threat to uh, Whedon. Um, he does have to play in the same conference as the Bengals, but their secondary got gutted. The Ravens, but their defense isn't nearly as scary as it used to be. And I think the Steelers are in that division. And the Steelers are the Steelers. But w- what, 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 what the Steelers do to uh, Colt McCoy? Well, I mean, they probably ended his well-known career because they knocked him out, and that's kind of what necessitated we didn't get him picked. But you've got Joe Thomas at tackle. You've got um, Trent Richardson. If he's a running back, everybody says he is. You've got a workhorse, which means you've got a lot of play-action passing opportunities. He, know, he knows what it takes to be a professional, and there's something about that that's important. Um, last and, and number one for me is RG3 um, because of what's around him. Um, and they've, got, they've got a defense. They've got receivers. They've got a – Good enough offensive line. He's he's not going to be Cam Newton, but no one thought Cam Newton was Cam Newton last no, year. No, no, he had a um, much better year than I think almost anyone yeah, thought. Yeah, I, I I I was wrong about Cam Newton. I'll be the first to say it. But I think RG three will put up three thousand yards, maybe twenty touchdowns, um, because he's going to play every game. Um, you know, he's durable. He got blasted in a couple of games in college and popped right up. He maybe missed a rubber band. I'm confused, but. I think him, it, it'll, it will be him and Wheaton the first three years, and people will be talking about luck, and they will be instantly saying that maybe the Colts made the wrong decision to get rid of uh, Peyton Manning. I, i just like to say, we, we know that all four of these quarterbacks are um, are going to have trouble. All rookie quarterbacks always have trouble. It's, uh, it's tough to come out mm-hmm. and, uh, and be unscathed. Um, let's look at the all-important position of who is going to save that quarterback. And uh, you might be thinking, yeah, it's got to be an offensive tackle. I think it is the punter. And <laughs> and if we compare the punter on all Here four teams... Here comes the teams, Jacksonville pick. Uh, and, and if we compare <laughs> the punters on all four teams, um, you've got to look at Indianapolis's punter, a Mountaineer, Pat McAfee. Oh, God. I was wondering and, where this was going. And, oh. and Pat McAfee offers... Provides promise. Oh God! Uh, for Dude. protecting the inability of Andrew Luck to get anything Look, done and, and, with and, a young offense. In all seriousness, I, I swear to God, when you said that guy's name, I thought he was about to do my taxes. <laughs> I have no clue why we're talking about punters, but go ahead. Uh, Pat, Pat McAfee is a phenomenal talent. Um, you you don't find another good punter uh, in Cleveland or in Miami. Sure, Savrock is decent with the Redskins. The fact um, that he knows their name. Do you play in the fantasy <laughs> football punting league? Uh, I, I, I do occasionally. Yeah. Wow. Right. Sure. Trust, trust in Pat McAfee and Andrew Luck. Uh, well, you know, I don't think the punter protects the quarterback as much as <laughs> oh the punter. The punter awesome. protects the defense, but... No, no, no. no. Let's just let it marinate. Let, 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 let it flow over you, Joe. <laughs> You, you, you need you need, you need oh that punter. When your, when I, I your believe that. Can't I believe there's a job opening in the Jacksonville front wow. office for you, my friend. When your offense Jeez. can't get it done, you've got to get the ball that, downfield. Honestly, that's your punter. hiring you would be less inexplicable than hiring Mike Malarkey. So, oh, yeah, uh, you know. You know. <laughs> um, I, I know we normally when you listen to us do rapid fire, they're more hard hitting, quick rapid fire questions. But uh, we had to fit it in somewhere because at the end of the day, we're all about. Red fire. <laughs> I, I do have one more thing to say about this subject before we leave. Um, the 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 way that the media treats RG three has bothered me a little bit, and that is that they seem to think RG three is Michael Vick, 
and I'm sick of people using yeah, them in the same sentence. Yeah. The worst, the worst insult disguising itself as a compliment of the draft was when Mel Kuyper said that RG3 is a better pure passer than Michael Vick was when he came out of college. That <laughs> is the most preposterous. Mike Vick, Mike Vick wasn't any kind of pure passer when he came out of college. Well, well, well if you look at Vick's numbers when he was at Virginia Tech, say what you want to say about the offense, but he was very high. He was a, he had a very high quarterback rating when he came out of college. Now, he was Kuyper not, is, Kuyper's right. He's a better pure passer. I watched most of his games his last year in college, and he was not a pure passer. He certainly wasn't a pure passer when he got to the Falcons. He still may not be a pure passer. It, it's it's unfair to Vic to even talk about him in that way, uh, and and it's he is RG three is not Michael Vic. He's not remotely the same kind of guy. He has some good offensive escapability, but he is not Vic. That's not the only reason people make that comparison is because they're black. That's no, 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 no. That, that, that's what I was about to say. And and what what people under undervalue about RG three to me is his intelligence. This guy is incredibly smart. And he's his life is together, which is something you could not say about so Mike he ain't Vick. Dogs? I'm saying he's not, he's not fighting dogs on the weekend. Uh, his life is together. He's smart as hell. If there's anything that really gives me, if I if I'm a Washington fan, what really encourages me is you've got Shanahan, who's got some good some good experience developing quarterbacks, and RG three can handle whatever Shanahan throws at him. He's not going to be confused by offenses. He's not going to be messing around outside of the game. This is a kid who's knows what's what's up and. Is, is a fundamentally different kind of player than Mike Vick. They need to stop talking about him that way and treat him as he is. Uh, you know, the, all they can talk about with Luck is, is you know, what a great efficient passer he is and how he has better athletic skills than you would think. In a lot of ways, that's a description of RG3. Uh, and, and I wish they would stop doing that. It's really annoying. All right, here's what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to be contrarian for a second. Um, who would you have liked them to compare them to? Luck. No, 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 no. If you were looking around the NFL currently, is my question, who would you have compared him to? Any quarterback within the last, I'll give you, 15 years. Uh, if you're going to compare him to a currently active quarterback, uh, there's a couple people that are a little bit better than than Vic to me. One of them is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, they are a little more similar in terms of size. Uh, Rodgers has good escapability. Uh, he throws the long ball really well. Uh, which is something that, that, that is one area in which both uh, RG3 and Vicar are alike because they throw the long ball well. But mm -hmm. RG3 throws the long ball with incredible accuracy uh, and also has good accuracy with the short and medium throws. Uh, I would compare him to somebody more like that. If you're going to compare him to uh, an athletic, if you want to compare him to a black quarterback, he's more like a better version of McNabb, who, of McNabb was coming out of, out of college. A better, more durable uh, slightly more mobile, but you, people forget how mobile the, uh, McNabb was coming out of college. If that's the comparison you want to make, make that comparison. Uh, you know, maybe he's more of a. It's it's hard because they're. I'm not sure we've seen a quarterback that's quite like him. Uh, but I, I like the Rodgers comparison. He's too big to be Drew Brees. Um, even though Drew Brees does have really good athletic skills when it comes to some of the same things and extending the play, which Brees is really good at. Um, you know, that that's those are the kinds of players I would compare him to rather than than Vic. Uh, he doesn't seem like Vic, except they throw the long ball well. Vic's undersized, which RG3 isn't. Vic is like a good three inches shorter than RG, RG3. Uh, no, he, he, he's short. And, and, I, I've I, I've and he doesn't, he's never had the kind of precision that RG3 does. It's a bad comparison. Um, Uncle Nick, who would you have compared him to? I like the Aaron Rodgers selection. I mean, it, it's somebody, you need somebody who is accurate, uh, who is mobile, but who is not a run first quarterback. And, and I think Aaron Rodgers is the closest we got. Uh, in the NFL right now. I probably would have took Cam Newton, um, only because of I think that's what people are going to be looking for from him is what Cam did. Because Cam came on the scene, everybody kind of forgets if Luck goes pro last year, uh, Luck is number one still. Um, but no one knew thought Cam would do this, and I think they see a quarterback who is not, he's not as big as Cam, but is mobile, can throw the football. The, the assumption of what they're looking for is Cam Newton. I, I, I agree with you that that the reason they compare him to Vic is only because of both both of them are fast um, and both of them are black. And for whatever reason, it for some reason, they don't want to put Steve Young into that category of quarterbacks, which I think that's a bigger sign um, necessarily right. compared to, to, to Mike Vick. But um, I think the McNabb one is spot on because McNabb was a better – was a – was a great passer who could run, yeah. which is what a lot of people who I think get annoyed with what you say. And there were a few people on ESPN who said, listen, 
This kid is not a running quarterback. He's a quarterback who can run. Yep. Well, and I thought that they did a good job of not making the Cam Newton comparison. I will say this. Cam's even bigger than RG3, and when he was in college, he was in an offense that stressed running quarterbacks mm-hmm. a lot more than, uh, than than what you saw with RG3. And so I, I don't know that they're exactly the same, but they're certainly more similar. Right? They're, they're mm-hmm. both, uh, and I think there were, some, there were more questions about Cam Newton's accuracy coming out of college than there were about RG3, and there Absolutely. were more concerns about Cam Newton's ability to extend the play and make passes with, from within the pocket than there are about RG3. People were saying he was going to have to sit. Yeah. Because he wasn't uh, ready to do what I'm with thought. you. I was wrong about Cam. He had a much better fr- first year than I thought he would. I- I'm still waiting to see what happens in the second year. But, all right, what else we got? Um, Joe, it's, t- 